Why gravity? Gravity is in some sense about the fabric of space-time. And if there are things about the fabric of space-time that you can unlock that are not contained in general relativity nor in the standard model, how much power do you think is in that? Tell me what you imagine might be the power beyond the standard model in general relativity. If we can already destroy all of humanity, what do you think might be on the other side of the next great discoveries? If there are other higher dimensions, if the multiverse theory holds, uh, if that allows you to access different universes and to move between them? It might be limitless power. It could be limitless power in the form of energy. It could be limitless power in the form of travel. I mean, look, look, here's the thing that I just don't understand. I'll be totally honest about it. Who isn't interested in this stuff? You have to be crazy to do what we're doing with physics. We're running physics into the ground. Physics is, you'll go to a Marvel movie about some guy trying to collect rings or stones to get infinite power over the universe. That's physics. That's not stones. When you see somebody talking about limitless power, think physics. Don't think money. Think physics. Physics is the source of infinite power. Can you explain in an accessible way what the problem is with string theory? It doesn't work. Do you mind if I play you a recording? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The following uh, clip is from uh, a podcast which probably has the highest IQ guests of any podcast on planet Earth called The Universe Speaks in Numbers. Nobody listens to this podcast. But this, uh, this is Edward Witten, um, and he is uh, talking about um, is being asked about string theory by Graham Farmello. I would say that string slash M theory is the only really interesting direction we have for going beyond the established framework of physics, mm -hmm. by which I mean quantum field theory at the quantum level mm -hmm. and classical general relativity mm -hmm. at the macroscopic scale. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But you've never been tempted down the other routes of other options? I'm not even sure what you would mean by other routes. There are no other routes. There are just words. That is the world's leading theoretical physicist opining about string theory. Can you imagine anything less scientific coming out of the mouth of Edward Witten? I, I don't even know how to respond to that. What's wrong with string theory? Their theories have had all of the money, all of the minds, all of the years, the conferences, everything, the praise, the PR articles, you name it, for 40 years straight. And it's done what? It's destroyed physics. So there's been, in 40 years, basically no progress in string theory? No meaningful, no well, useful? Internal to string theory. But functionally outside of that? Th that's 40 years of string theory. In 50 years, the standard model of particle theory hasn't moved. There are no young people who have ever walked on the moon. And there are no young theoretical physicists who have contributed to our picture um, of the universe in a way that's been confirmed. Everybody who's gone up against this guy, in essence, has lost. He's terrifying. And he's completely scientifically uh, outside of his ethical boundaries with st statements like this. You, you can't do that to science. Even Edward Witten is not so great of a mathematician that he's allowed to take out theoretical physics. And, and it's, it's time for Ed Witten to actually face the other theories that are out there and stop jawing off about how it's only just words outside. Because if he actually had to face a real critic, somebody who has some knowledge of what the history of string theory was, but I don't see these people as having gone up against their technical critics. You know, Feynman was a huge critic of string theory. Sheldon Glashow, who won a Nobel Prize for symmetry breaking, was a critic of string theory. There are string theorists who have defected, like Dan Friedan. There's no shortage of very competent people who have said, what the hell is going on? Why are we doing this? This is madness. I've never heard Ed Witten face one of these people. 
to me, a previous generation threw a lit match into a room filled with kerosene. And this is the generation that's blocking the exit. And I would expect that Ed Witten was taking responsibility for trying to figure out whether the cosmos are traversable and whether we can leave Earth. Is there any way we can get access to more energy? Is there any way that we can reveal space-time to not be fundamental so that we, maybe we can do something that would be confused with going faster than light? Maybe we can reach the stars through methods that we can't understand using what we have. Why is Ed Witten guarding the exit? And as everybody can see, supersymmetry and string theory did not, in the past 30 years, did not deliver a single result which Isaac Newton had called physics. So aren't you afraid of being the scientific leader of an entire epoch of physics that might lead to nowhere? Aren't you afraid of misguiding the concentrated intelligence of seven billion people on a planet? Of course, Excuse me, can, I think course, your, your scientific question is now pretty clear. I it was Mr. about Witt the predictivity of string theory, and I think Edward is happy to uh, answer this aspect of the question. Thank you. I think you've asked uh, several questions, so now you should give me the chance to answer. So the first point, in it, by way of reply, is that um, sometimes things take time. The Higgs particle was just a hypothesis for 50 years, and there were plenty of skeptics about it. Uh, neutron stars were regarded as science fiction. And gravitational waves seemed hopelessly undetectable when Einstein first um, proposed them, predicted them. And the fact that eventually an incredible story involving uh, the binary pulsar made it possible to discover them was totally unforeseeable. Uh, quantum mechanics and gravity do exist. And it's, yet they don't work together in the known framework of physics. It's inevitable for humans to try to understand how they can work, work together. And when a framework is discovered that makes it inevitable to have quantum mechanics and gravity together rather than impossible, as in the standard framework, it's inevitable that people take it seriously and explore it. And finally, string theory has, gotten a lot, has given us a lot of insight about better understanding physical theories we already have suggesting that it knows an awful lot about the real world, even if we don't know very much of what it knows. How long can the world of physics be captured by an idea that no meaningful progress is made inside of before more people say, it's time to look at something else? Um, that's an interesting question. The problem is that um, there isn't going to be much of physics left when this group dies. There isn't much physics left. People have forgotten what the original problems are. He swapped out one set of problems that we all agreed on. Uh, all of these problems that are all about the physical world in which we live, and he swapped them out for different problems, like how do we quantize gravity, as if that's definitely what we have to do. Those were sort of mathematical, analytic problems rather than physical problems. And so as a result, two generations of physicists have been brainwashed into not caring about the physical world and being, they're totally devoted to various abstract areas of mathematics. How long can the legacy of that continue for? Well, how do you rebuild theoretical physics when almost nobody's doing theoretical physics? In the field of fundamental physics beyond general relativity and the standard model, there isn't much of a field left. You go on a random day to the archive where people post papers, and the papers aren't really about charmed quarks or muons or realistic models of the universe. They're about weird esoteric topics in mathematics. If you're not paid to work on physics, they've got their hands wrapped around our, our wallets. We can't afford to do physics. It's, it's, it's as if there's a force that says, if you want to work on the world's most important problem, we're going to make you poor. We're going to discredit you. It's almost like there's a force field trying to get us not to unlock this power. And I've been very curious about why that is.